here's the sink that I'll be using. We'll be needing a caulking gun, some acrylic caulk. Got my son here. He's uh, he's applying the adhesive on the corners. Doing a fine job. Way to go, Joe. So I'll be narrating the first part of this, but the uh, second half I received a microphone um, to record it live. Here I'm putting the sink in and setting it in place. Joe's putting a bead of the uh, caulking compound around the edges to seal it off. Uh, keeps the water out. Getting behind there. And I'm smoothing it on out. It's always good to wet your finger before you do that. It makes it uh, not stick as bad. Moving on, we're going to be installing the drain here, so I'm showing you the drain, sticking it in, going to do a cut okay. shot of that, look at that, comes with this uh, rubber gasket, um, I'm showing you the orientation, it, the angle goes up, and here's the collar that screws it up into place. All right, we have an ABS P-trap solvent weld, inch and a half ABS pipe, some ABS cleaner, ABS cement, and the faucet. Hi guys. The problem I ran into. Let me show you. The trap I set up. This distance wasn't sufficient, and this downpipe wasn't sufficiently long to line up with my uh, pipe here, drain pipe here in the wall. So the lowest I could go, loosen this call it up. The lowest I could go is about there, which is about an inch too short. So I bought this. Unfortunately they didn't have any in this black PVC, or sorry, black ABS, but it's white and it should work just fine. So let's open it up. By the way guys, if you're looking for a new knife, I love this thing. This is made by SOG. It's called the Terminus. I got this one in D2. It was a Christmas present from my wife. Uh, very good steel. Hold its edge really well. Um, and it has this little lock here. So you can close it with one hand, open it with one hand. I like that. That's nice. It's handy. Just a little plug for that. So you'll see here the, there's, there's this little recess, and there's this thing we call a ferrule. Um, that'll go on, the cap will go on first, then the ferrule, and it'll, it'll have two angles on it, right? A short angle and a long angle. You want to put the long angle, long taper, downwards. Okay. Okay, so already I can see there's going to be a problem here. This is going to be way too low. It doesn't slide freely inside of here. So what I'm going to have to do is shorten this down tube to work. And that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> By the way, how's the sound? 
I got a new uh, shotgun mic for my rig. First, I want to see how far up this thing will go. It's fairly tight. I'll just make a quick little mark here with a pencil. And then come back off. So it goes about that far. And compare that to this. So on this pipe here, it'll come down to about the bottom of this little symbol. I don't know if you can see that on the film or not, but there's a little symbol there. That's about as tight, far down as I can get it onto there. So what I need to do, let's go ahead and hold this in place and kind of get an idea here. So this will be here. And I need to have it, the tip of this come down to about, about there. Okay. About there. So you can see the line I made on here. I'm just going to transfer it over here. And this isn't exact. And that's where I'm going to need to make my cut is right there. Um, I have an oscillating saw. I could cut this off in place. But what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and stick this in a miter box for a nice clean cut. Less clean up that way. Especially since I don't have any kind of caulking or anything holding this in place. It's just got this collar on here. Let me find my mark. There it is. Very faint. As you can see, I've put this back in, and I've cut a lot off. Well, I guess it's not a whole lot, but I cut that much off. So this piece is be hard to replace if you go too short with it. So be careful. Do your measurements. If you run into this situation, I think what happened here is that this the sink just sits a lot lower than the old one did, and so it makes for a very tight space. So we'll do what we did earlier. Go ahead and stick on the collar. Stick on the ferrule. There we go. See that holds it up in place. We'll stick up this tube extension. We'll just stick it up as high as it'll go. And then we'll tighten this down. should work good. Okay, you can see that's solid. All right. So this one's kind of interesting. This doesn't have a ferrule, but the cap itself acts as the ferrule. As you tighten it down, it squeezes the seal down. So we're going to put this cap on, put our trap on, kind of try to eyeball it, and cinch it down. And you can see as you tighten, it gets tight. It holds on to the downpipe. So once it's lined up pretty close, we're gonna need to get a piece of pipe to go between the trap and the drain piping in the wall. So what we can do is kind of and measure it or you can hold it up there like I'm gonna do now which are like famous last words it's probably gonna end up being two cuts this way it's always good to measure and then I'm holding it up and marking just putting I think that's my mark yeah and just put my mark on there and I'll cut it off right there and we'll see if uh, that works. All right. Let's see if it fits. So, here's the piece that we just cut. Let's 
go ahead and dry fit everything together first and see before we glue. Because that's, once you glue it, it's a pain to try to, you have to cut everything apart. I might even have to tear into the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this trap down. Put that on there. Okay, so everything's in nice and tight. What I'm gonna do is I like to see how deep I'm going into this, so you can't probably block in there. So I always put a mark across just so I can make sure I'm getting good penetration. And then we're gonna put an index mark on the top of this and the top of that. That way we can get the orientation right when we glue everything together. So we'll put a mark right here and have one correspond right there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and tear it apart. see those marks better maybe you can see why I do the depth I can see that I got full engagement okay, okay. I'm gonna lay down some tin foil and have a piece of paper towel handy because this could get messy I don't want to damage this new cabinet my wife got so you could put down paper towels but they're permeable tin foil it's not going through okay so that's the combination we need right there cleaner and ABS cement start off with the cleaner these caps even on the cleaner get kind of welded on there so you might have to use a pair of pliers to get them off. There we go. And you can see I dripped already. Glad I put that down. So the cleaner is gonna to wanna to wipe off the marks you made, so you gotta be careful. I kind of wring it out a little bit on the edge. It's got this little little swab on there. And just go all the way around with it. Okay. Clean both the male and female portions you plan on putting together. So we got the male portion or female portion here. We'll do the inside. for right now okay it kind of makes it tacky even though it's a cleaner it's kind of the solvent it kind of breaks down the plastic a little bit this is probably wow that opened easy the cement it smells great in here by the way guys this stuff is solvent based it gives off lots of fumes so I recommend if you have a fan turn it on so we'll just give it a swipe around there Looks good. And same thing on the female portion. Give it 
couple of times around. All right. So I'm going to take my mark and I'm going to put it about a quarter off because you're going to do a little bit of a twist. Insert and twist about a quarter turn and then hold it on the marks you got. Hold it for a few seconds. Keep it from wanting to force its way out. And that's good. All right. And we'll do the same thing for the back. Cleaner. I'm gonna be real diligent about it in here because this is this has been like taped up for this whole project. And it's pretty dirty in there. Uh-oh, I got a little bit on Crystal's cabinet here. So we're done with the cleaner. Now it's cement time. I'm gonna cement the inside here first. Sorry if I'm blocking you guys. Just tight, tight quarters here. All right, got the inside done. Then we'll do the outside like we did on the other one. Same thing, we're gonna go a quarter turn. So push it in, turn it until you're lined up. And then hold it. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes to uh, let this set up some before I attach it, put any kind of stress on it. So we'll be back in a couple. All right, guys, we're back. So we're gonna go ahead and put our crap on. You guys are wondering why I turn these threaded portions backwards when I first start. If you push down pressure against the threads, the male and female portions, and go the opposite direction, you can hear a click, feel a click when the the first thread lines up on both the female and the male portion, and then you can go forward and and, and uh, tighten it up. It really helps out. Instead of just spinning your wheels. Alright guys. Guess what? We got the the uh, piping for the drain in. Alright, next we're going to put the faucet in. So here's our faucet. Is it in frame? Heck no. There we go. Here's our faucet. Here's where the connections for the water supply lines are going to go. Notice how there's flats on each side of that. Are you picking that up? See there's flats? Ensure that you have a wrench on here when you're tightening the hoses down 
because you do not want to twist these metal lines. So you want to be putting opposite direction pressure when you're tightening down the supply lines. So what will happen, this will go through, this goes through here, this decorative piece that covers up these holes, and then this piece will go down through the center. In case you won't be able to see it, there's going to go on a plastic washer first to make contact with the sink, and then a metal washer. Imagine, if you will, the sink's going to be in between here. Then you get this little device. That'll go on and then thread into place. On some sink setups, this might just be like a nut that you thread all the way up and it tightens. This one's kind of handy. Is you thread it into place and there's two screws, once you get it close, that you can tighten and they'll push upward pressure and sandwich it against the sink. So that's what's going to be going on underneath there. So that's going to go through like that. I'll see you on the underside of the sink. Guys, it's about as good as I can get. thing we'll do is we'll get this thing locked into place before we put the hoses on. We'll stick that up. Remember what a pain this was to get on. Oh wow. Nice and easy now. I'll take that. So this is called using the force. I cannot see what I'm doing. All I can do is feel. So a lot of it's just going to be using your sense of touch. So what I'm going to do is just tighten this down. Okay. All right. I'm going to go straight from the nozzle off, off top and the faucet. Again, guys, just using the sense of touch here. Make sure I'm straight up top. Looks good. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and cinch it on down now. screws I'm blocking your shot I apologize so as I tighten these down as I tighten these down they cinch up against the sink and lock the faucet in place That's nice and tight. That works. Okay. Now we're going to hook up our water lines. All right, looks at like the hot one's a little bit longer than the cold one. So if you remember, and it looks like, yes. Here's the cold line, like kind of crisscross. Remember how I said to thread it backwards and then thread it forward? Here's an excellent case. So before I put too much pressure on that, I'm gonna throw a wrench on the other side. I'm gonna slightly bend this one over. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this top one up first. So let's get a wrench on there and let's get it to the right size. Okay. Bend that. Don't bend these copper lines too much. Just 
minimal, just enough to get the job done. I'm tightening it down. I got my slip joint pliers I'm getting ready to use here. Pretty tight. Okay. Hot water line. I'm gonna just kind of get it tilted over there slightly. Needs to go a little bit further so it can reach. Right about there. Trying not to block your shots, guys. But it's tight quarters down here. find this about plumbing. Plumbing, everything, there's never enough room. Never. Never enough room and then your tools just disappear. Just disappear into thin air. Installed. Yeah. Now's the moment of truth. Let's open up the water and look for leaks. No, no leaks from that connection. from that connection looks good guys well I'm gonna show you something while I'm in here I'm gonna try not to bounce you around too much but let's see if I can get a good angle there we go it's hard to see but you'll see right behind the handle there's a little uh, looks like a bolt or a nut head it's called a packing gland and on this type of valve this is not a ball valve this is a, a plug valve there's a little um, squishy piece of sealer on the inside of this and as you tighten this down it squishes it against the stem of the valve so if you have a leak coming from the stem of the valve you can take and just put a little turn just a little bit at a time and you might be able to fix that leak fairly easy just a little tip so there's the sink with the faucet installed let's see what we got Hey, hey, success. And let's look for any leaks on the drain piping. And I don't see any leaks on this either. So guys, that was a successful, successful installation of Crystal Sink. So we finally did it. The sink is installed. One step closer in this bathroom remodel. Hey, if you're getting something out of this content, go ahead and subscribe. And while you're at it, if you could like and open up notifications, that'd be great. Thanks. See you next time.